Hello, this is Frank Deming with yet another special episode of Marketing Solutions for Local Businesses. Due to the pandemic, once again, I'm getting a lot of requests from people uh, who are needing some information about you know, the loans that they can do it, et cetera, et cetera. So this next guest that I have today, we're going to kick off this week the right way because she's going to inspire you. She's going to she's going to tell you exactly what you need to do to get prepared for what's going on and how to save money at the same time um, doing that. So she is a, a, a person who's loved numbers all her life. She's actually homeschooled all her kids. Um, and you know, with all the numbers and stuff. And then, um, after she had a career as a mechanical engineer in the corporate world, she decided to start her own bookkeeping professional and financial coach business. So she knows what she's talking about, about saving money and about making it best for you. So, and taking, taking advantage of government programs that are out there, especially in this, um, difficult time in our our country so without further ado our next special episode of marketing solutions for local businesses starts right now hello and welcome to marketing solutions for local businesses the podcast where you will discover all the latest and greatest digital marketing tools tips and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition If you are not getting the results you are looking for from your digital marketing efforts, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's the host of our show, the local business guy himself, Frank Deming. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Frank Deming, the local business guy, with another special episode of Marketing Solutions for Local Businesses. As you know, we bring forth weekly tips, tools, and tricks on marketing, digital marketing, that is, practices that are working for local businesses uh, right now, all the uh, latest and greatest. But today I have a special edition of this, of this podcast because of the current climate in the, um, in, in, in the, in the world, really, today. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to be talking primarily to, about businesses in the, U, in the U.S., today. And as I said in the pre-intro, I have a special guest today that's very knowledgeable on, um, I mean, I, I, I can tell you one thing because I have experience working with her in the past and she's, she's very knowledgeable about saving money. She's very valuable about information about finances throughout, like I said, here in the U.S. So I, I thought it would be a good idea given the current climate of people frust- being frustrated about money these days and maybe uh, feeling the, the, uh, an, an, an initial impact right now that could get worse. Uh, so before it gets worse, I wanted to bring this guest on. Her name is Connie Jo Miller. And um, I think you guys are going to be enlightened by this, uh, this young lady. She is very, very full of knowledge when it comes to saving money, when it comes to using your money properly in your business, especially now. So I wanted to bring her on so she can enlighten us. Uh, and she's got a special, she's got a special message for you. So Connie, uh, can you uh, do me a favor? I know I get a, a introduction to you in, a, in the pre-intro, but can you say, for, uh, you know, who is Connie Joe Miller first before we get going? Well, I'm um, a happy, um, joyful person. I love helping people and I especially love helping people with their money. I'm um, a professional bookkeeper. Um, I'm a financial coach and a money guide. I help also help people with their personal finances. So basically I love numbers and anything to do with money. (laughs) That's interesting. Um, So yeah, that's, uh, and as you know, like I said earlier, a lot of people have concerns about money. So I thought it was a good timely thing to bring you on. Out of curiosity, um, I wanted to ask you just a few questions, if you don't mind. And and thank you, first of all, for being available uh, for this special edition of this podcast. Uh, but I wanted to ask you some questions about the craziness and the uncertainty in this economy today. You know, like something like, you know, what can a small business owner do to protect themselves from the financial, uh, uh, from a, from a uh, financial perspective? 
Well, one of the first things you should do, and you should do this all the time, but it's especially important now, is that you want to try to um, cut um, as much spending as you can, and that's true in your business and in your personal life. You really don't know how much longer this is going to go on. We don't really understand what the full impact is going to be, but start looking at ways that you can cut your spending. You can cut your outflow of cash. So you want to look at every way that you're spending money now. Um, you especially want to look at recurring payments. Um, so is there any, are, are there any of these recurring payments that you can eliminate or maybe you can even put on hold. Sometimes, especially now, businesses are allowing people to pause things that they're, they're doing. Um, so look into that. And then also think about if you have annual things that come up. Um, uh, look at those and say, um, or ask yourself if you can postpone uh, renewing something that's annual or can you actually do without it? So you're just con you just need to be looking at everything um, um, through a microscope. Do I really need this? Um, like, uh, like the non-essential stuff, right? Yeah, and if there is stuff that you think you definitely need for your business, you need to if, um, ask yourself how long has it been since you shopped around. You might be able to um, find another option that's less expensive. So um, oh, you mean like a similar uh, a similar thing, but maybe. Uh, but, but, but cheaper, is that what you're talking like? Maybe something yeah, similar maybe, that performs the same task yeah. or the same service? And maybe you have a system that's very robust, but you really aren't using all the options. So can you, can you um, scale it back and, and use something that's less expensive? Right, right. Okay, well, yeah, that's, uh, I know that sounds pretty obvious for a lot of people out there, but sometimes when you, you know, <laughs> when, you're, when you're not thinking straight because of, of these types of uh, situations, you could miss something like that. So I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Well, um, and it's kind of like you, you, see, you see things that come through every month and it's just there and it's like, yeah, that's supposed to be there, but you don't really necessarily stop and think, do I really need this? Like some people have HBO and Netflix and <laughs> Prime Video and Stars, and it's like, do you really need all those? Are you really using all those? But it's just like an automatic payment. So you just keep, and for it, but now it's time to say, okay, do I really need these things? Am I really using these things? Right. Um, folks, I just wanted to talk about so, a little bit about uh, Connie Joe's business. She, she owns her own um, bookkeeping service. So be, before we, we continue, can you tell a little bit about who, who's your target market mostly? Uh, Connie, who do you normally work with? Sure. Um, well, my business is Enigma Bookkeeping Solutions, um, and my um, ideal client is a solopreneur, someone who is working for themselves. They may use subcontractors, but basically they're doing everything themselves. That's who I like to serve, and I, um, I love to um, provide them financial information so they understand their business, because if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. So yeah. Make sure my clients know their numbers. So you're a high touch person. You, you get, you get, uh, you get to know your clients well, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. Uh, so out of curiosity, based on the question, based on your answer, uh, of the previous question about, um, you know, where can they save? Let's, let's say you go through all of this, like, you know, you've noticed you've got this software, that software, you've got all these things aligned and you still having problems and, and you cut through things, you, you know, you, you have made your cuts, right? You've, you know, all right, I switched from this software to that software. I no longer need, need this. So I, I cut that out of my expenses. Let's just assume I don't want to play, you know, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here or, but I just want to play some devil's advocate. Let's just assume uh, you're still having problems with your bills. Like what advice do, would you give someone in that case? Well, the first thing to do is you want to contact your creditors. You want to um, get a hold of everyone that you um, you owe money to. So, even if you're not feeling it right now, like I said, we don't know how long this is going on, and you're thinking, you know, maybe in a few months. I don't know how this is going to go. So, contact them now, though. Find out what your options are for minimizing your um, cash outflow. Um, 
some uh, creditors are allowing you to put your um, uh, payments into forbearance. Basically, you're, it's pausing um, what you owe. Um, some of them are doing that, but there may be still, um, you're still accumulating interest um, on your, your balance. Um, you want to find out how long payments can be put on hold, if, you know, if that's an option. Um, most, at least for me, most of the financial institutions that I deal with, they've already sent out their COVID-19 update alert thing. And some of them will tell you they'll do something or that they're here to help, but they aren't real specific. So you really need to contact them. And of course, if you call them, wait times are really long. Um, I've had some luck doing chats to me, online chats, or I prefer those to being on the phone. Um, so those work, but, but the key takeaway here is don't wait until you're in a mess. Go ahead and reach out now, find out what your options are so that you have an idea of what you can do if you need it well, now or in the future. So you gotta be proactive basically. Yes. Speaking of being proactive and this is, you know, I, there's no one I know in my sphere of influence anyway, that understands money management uh, than you. Hence the reason why you're on call. So Thank I want to, because I think it's because you just, you know, you're just a research maven, I think. I think you just know how to research. And I want to, I want to enlighten our, our listeners on something. And I want to warn them right now, if you don't have a pen and paper, please get one right now, because I'm pretty sure you're going to get enlightened. Um, by by what she's about to say because a lot of people have heard about this cares act right so i i'm curious because no one researches more than you so i'm just kind of curious what have you heard about this cares act that was just signed well first of all i'm not an expert on the cares act but i have been doing a lot of research um i have some very trusted um I guess advisors um mentors I've been, I've been going to webinars that are specifically geared, geared towards um, people, um, especially bookkeepers, um, so they can um, serve their clients by providing information. But again, I'm not an expert, so um, just keep that in mind. But basically- She's um, being the modest, CARES, folks. Don't, don't, don't believe her, but go ahead. I'm not I'm an expert, I promise. But the CARES Act, it actually stands for the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. And it was recently signed into law. And what it does is it provides several provisions that will provide economic relief for small businesses, nonprofits, and other business owners. And there's two um, basic um, benefits that have come out of um, this act. There's small loan programs that are guaranteed by the Small Business Administration. And these type of loans used to be, I believe, 50% uh, guaranteed by the SBA, but now they're 100% guaranteed by the SBA. And there's also been changes to tax law to reduce taxation and to help businesses improve their cash flow. But over $2 trillion has been allocated to this uh, CARES Act, and $377 billion of that has been targeted just to small businesses. So what, was that to number? what was that number again? I'm sorry. $377 billion is just for okay. small businesses. And this, awesome. I've heard, is just the first round. There, uh, again, experts have said there will probably be another um, CARES Act type legislation that comes around probably sometime in April. So this is just hopefully the first of um, a few, probably not many, but a few um, hunks of money that are going to be available to help people because we're in a very unique time right now. But, Outstanding. But, but what you need to do is you need to learn as much about this legislation as you can. It's not easy to read. I have not read the whole thing. I've read sections of it. Um, but you really need to know what's available and how you can um, take advantage of it and uh, use it to support your business. Because well, the whole point of this is so businesses don't go out of business. is to keep people working, keep the economy 
moving and we all know it's already taken a huge hit, but it's something that we can come out of um, if people are funded and can keep things as you know normal as possible. So you wanna, if, if you're wanting to take advantage of, of this, these programs, you really wanna talk to somebody who's very knowledgeable about it. Cause it's not, it's not straightforward and there's a lot of misinformation floating around. I'm in some Facebook groups with entrepreneurs and the things they're saying are just not true. So make sure if you're taking advice from somebody, it's from somebody that actually knows what they're talking about. And it should be somebody that's at least somehow related to the finance world, not somebody who has a, I don't know, a bow making business. <laughs> um, that's what they're, that's who's talking in these groups. They're like, oh, I got, I got $10,000. And you know, it's just, just be careful. Just be careful. Make sure you have a reliable source. And that's true anytime, anytime you're doing anything, especially with money, make sure that the advice you're taking is from somebody that's reputable and knows what they're talking about. What, what would be a, a reputable source? Would that be an accountant and a lawyer? What, what, an give, accountant, give some samples. Yeah, an accountant, um, an excellent bookkeeper can help you with that. Um, a financial planner. Shameless plug by Connie Jo Miller. <laughs> financial advisors, financial planners. And ideally it's somebody that you already have a relationship with. Right. Because like I said, I'm not an expert. I will tell you what I, what I know to be true. I'll also refer you to directly to the, the bill, so read it yourself. Um, or if I, I end up with uh, some people that I trust and, and feel confident that they can help you, I'll, I'll pass you on to them. Because I, like I said, my knowledge is limited, but I certainly will have contacts with people that know a lot more than me. Okay, well, that, that makes sense. Um... Now, out of curiosity, does the, does, is the CARES Act and say, does it have to do anything with a small business loan? Is, is there, are, there, are there special small business loans available now, or is it all wrapped into this CARES Act thing? I'm a little well, there, confused about that. There, there are two, um, two kinds of loan. Well, one loan, it's called the economic injury disaster loan. That is an existing loan that's been um, part of the SBA. So those are existing loans. But what they did is they, um, they added, they modified these types of loans. So all small businesses, nonprofits, sole proprietors, and independent contractors that are operating under this, this, this disaster area can apply for loans up to $2 million. So the thing that changed is that there's an advance available. So these types of loans you apply directly for through the SBA. So you go to, and I'll give you a, a web address if you want to do this. It's covid19relief.sba.gov. And that'll take you to this application um, for an SBA loan. So all of these EIDLs, they're called, when you apply, you're applying for a loan. Okay. But this, the secret sauce with these loans is that in, part, in, in the application, it asked, would you like an advance? And that's what everybody's buzzing about, is that you can say, yes, I would like an advance. And the advance is up to $10,000 and it is a grant. So you don't have to pay it back. So right. in, in the, and in the bill, it says that you, it will be available within three days. Well, I'm finding people are not getting in three days, but I have heard of somebody that got um, a grant and a loan approved in five days. So I'm sure they're just you know, swamped. Yeah. They're swamped, they're, they're, everybody's doing this at once. There's a limited yeah. people working. But it is happening. It's true. So this is That's, a truth. This is not like that Facebook thing. This is this no. Is it's true, but there's some um, you know buts. Yeah, <laughs> delay. Right. So this ten thousand dollars is isn't just for you to do whatever you want to do with. So 
I recommend that if you um, receive these funds, so when you apply, it's a very simple application. It doesn't take very long to do, but when you apply, you, you have to put your business um, checking account number and your routing number. They literally just directly deposit this money into your account. But what I re recommend you do is that you create a separate checking account where you put this money and any loan money you get, either with this or the other kind of loan that I'm gonna tell you about later, um, put that into that account because you need to keep very accurate records about how you spend this money. It's not just to spend any way you want. So the ways you can spend this EID, EIDL grant money is to pro provide paid leave for employees, to maintain your payroll, um, to pay for increased supply costs, to pay for mortgage or um, lease payments. And those are business mortgages and business leases, not your house, not your personal expenses. And also for repaying debts that cannot be met due to revenue losses. So what, about, one, uh, what, about, what about for like marketing? No. Okay. No, it's for just these specific items. Um, and again, you can go and look directly in the bill and you can see how it's worded in there. Um, unfortunately, I tried to dig deeper and say, okay, what is a, 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 oblig a debt uh, obligation? What does that mean? What's the definition? And that's where it kind of falls flat. You can't really find definitions for terms they're using in the bill. Mm. which is very frustrating. It's like, well, what do they mean? Well, I don't know. And that's where really getting, talking with somebody that's really an expert on this bill can help you to define things because it's right. very ambiguous sometimes. I actually had a, uh, earlier uh, this week on the show, I had a, a SBA lender. He talked a little bit about this, but not, not as with great detail as you are. So I'm very, very happy that my listeners get a second um, viewpoint of this EIDL because I, I think it was um, uh, what not, I want to, I don't want to say it was glossed over. It was just, he had other different information about it, but you're, you're giving some details that I think it's going to help folks. So I hope you guys are taking notes. Okay. Uh, and I, I'll drop the link on the show notes that she mentioned. So, so you guys can take a look, but continue. Sorry for the interruption there. Oh, well, that's fine. So, so what's important is if you do get up to $10,000, it's a grant. It does not need to be paid back. And you, you get this even if you aren't approved for the loan. So you need to understand when you're, when you're filling out this application, you're applying for a loan. Um, but even if you're not approved for the loan, you can receive a grant and you don't need to pay that back, but you need to use it for these specific expenses and this money is um is limited there's only so much to go around there's 30 million small businesses in the country and they're all wanting to get this money so time is of the essence go ahead and apply for the grant right now and um and you know get in line basically right <laughs> there for you. that's what it's for be patient in other words yeah so that's then the nice. other um, type of loan. It's a new type of loan that's available. Um, this is applied for not through the SBA directly, but through SBA approved lenders. And you can go to the SBA side and search on, you know, lenders and it will give you a list, I think by where you live, um, what banks are um, available for you okay. or approved lenders for these types of loans. Now, these aren't available today but they're supposed to be available tomorrow. Um, and, but there's a hierarchy of needs of who can get these. Um, they're called pay, pay, paycheck protection loans. So April 3rd is for mainly for businesses that have employees. And then April 10th, they become available for sole proprietors, I can't say that word, proprietors and independent contractors. Ah. So there's, um, a tier here, tier thing of, of who can apply. But these, um, these loans are specifically aimed at people with um, employees, 
Um, the idea is to keep people getting paid and not going unemployment. I just heard, I think last week, 6.5 million people applied for unemployment. Um, so they're trying to avoid that, more of that. Um, but I, I, people don't really know about these yet. Um, right, right. They're learning. They're, they're just starting to learn. So well, that's, really, that's, why, that's why we're here, right? We're trying to educate people. <laughs> people were scared it's like i can't meet payroll i'm not making any money i gotta fire people and so the the result is all these people now applying for unemployment and there are special unemployment funds available on top of what your state pays um there's a i've heard it's six hundred dollars a week extra um coming from this this bill that's paying unemployment um, expenses so okay. there's different ways to go, but, you know, hopefully people are going to start taking advantage of these loans and keep their employees employed. It costs a lot of money to fire or lay off people and then rehire and retrain. And, yeah. you know, you don't want to do that. So no, you, you don't take advantage of what's available to you. But sure. the way these loans work is that, um, What's provided is two and a half times what your monthly average payroll or expenses are, and that's up to $10 million. So you take what your, and, and payroll expenses include like insurance payments and um, I think uh, FICA and um, there's a lot of things that are included in payroll expenses. Right. So um, that's, um, that's what you can apply for. And um, you don't need any kind of personal guarantee. You don't need any kind of a collateral. And then the other thing is that the fees, principal, and interest on these loans are deferred. It's either going to be six or 12 months. So even when you get the loan, you don't have to start making payments on the loan. And then the secret sauce with this kind of loan is that if you use, it's, and it's from date of uh, origination, if you use these funds to cover your normal payroll expenses for eight weeks, the loan, that part of the loan is forgiven. So about 75% of what you get covers your payroll, and then there's another 25% for other kinds of expenses that you have. So go go back for a minute. Something you said startled me a little bit. So you said when you apply for these loans, you um, you you don't need to pay it back right then and there, not initially. There's got to be some sort of time frame that you do have to start paying it back, right? When when is that? Well, the, it's they're deferred for six to twelve months. Oh, six to twelve months. Okay. Yeah. But well, I guess that's dependent upon how long this uh, pandemic or stay at home order is going is going on. Yeah, but then the other part is that if you use the funds to pay your normal payroll, so you need to be paying um, your employees at the normal level that you were paying them before, and you do that for eight weeks from the date of origination, that part of the loan is forgiven. You eight don't weeks. have to pay. Yeah, that's. It's what about what about week nine? <laughs> well, hope that's that's maybe when the second round of stuff happens. Oh, okay, okay. Get, you know, new. De this is changing daily. Not the bill isn't changing, but there's just new stuff coming up every day, and and more. Um, I guess reliable, detailed um, definitions of what things mean. This was you know, put together pretty quickly and yeah, yeah it had to be, yeah. there's, I'm sure there's going to be amendments or addendums or I don't know what they do with the bill, but to define more clearly what this is and um, banks awesome. are being, you know, educated and um, the SBA people are being edu It's just, it's a lot, but, but the whole point of this is not to lay off employees, continue paying them. The CARES Act is giving you the funds so that you can keep paying your employees um, and avoid, you know, these huge number of people that are applying for unemployment. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, that's a lot of stuff, uh, Connie. I, I really, really, really um, feel blessed that I, I, 
you, I have you in my inner circle, like I said, and um, I'm glad that you're able to, to actually educate us with this. Before I let you go, though, I wanted to ask you, what, you know, was there anything that I missed? Is there anything, you know, because these are the specific questions that I had, but is there anything that, that maybe you think, maybe that came out last minute before we set this interview up that you want to you, you wanna tell, tell the listeners? Well, there's some things that you need well, to know specifically, know what, what you need before you apply for these loans. And okay. the key thing, as a bookkeeper, I would tell you this anytime, but the most important thing is you need to have your books up to date. When you are applying for any kind of loan or any kind of financial help, you, you need to have accurate financial information about your business. So you need your books up to date. And the other thing is like some of these um, loans have different windows, um, like the EIDL, EIDL loan is um, it would covered from February 1st of 2019 to January 31st of 2020. They consider that the date of the disaster. So it's, you go 12, ma 12 months back from that date. Um, these PPL loans, it's different. I'm not sure. Ex there's different ways to calculate um, the 2.5 times payroll number. Um, so it's it's a you just need everything together so that whatever you need to pull to apply for the loan, you're going to have those those numbers for those that range of dates. So make okay. sure your book is up to order and. Um, I said this before, but the EIDLs are applied for through the Small Business Administration directly, but the PPLs are through an SBA approved lender. And you need to contact them right now. The application's not even up yet, but you need to start talking to them now saying, what do I do? And you need to start gathering the information that you need to apply for these loans. Ideally, um, people that are going to be first in line are people that already have a relationship with the bank that is an SBA approved lender. Um, so uh, if you don't have a relationship with a bank that is, it's time to start, call, call around, find somebody, um, start building a relationship. They're going to be super busy, so it's going to be kind of hard to do, but you're going to have to make an effort. Um, and on the PPLs, there's more money available for this. So um, it's more important than you, that you have accurate information. Um, it's more important to have that and then apply than to hurry up and apply and just hope for the best. You wanna make sure that you, you got all your ducks in a row before you, um, you apply for these PPLs. Okay. Um, and and wow. you can apply for both an EIDL and a PPL, but the costs that are covered by each cannot overlap. Mm. So you can do both, but you can't, you can't double dip basically. So, but you can't, if you do get an EIDL, you can roll that over into a PPL. So oh, you, okay. you, get, you can refinance that part. And the end, I don't have the numbers um, right here, but the, the interest rates, I believe, don't quote me, are a half a percent for two years for these PPLs. So they're very uh, generous in their financing. Um, num yeah, I can't think of the term. They're, they're really a good deal. They're, they're okay. not a lot of um, interest is gonna be paid on these. And that's, and that's, like you said, six to 12 months that you have to cons start thinking about paying them back. Right, six okay. to 12 months. That's what I've heard right now. Right. Um, but uh, but again, if you are if you use the money that you get and you continue to pay your normal payroll, um, that part's forgiven. So it's okay. going to be. Um, it should just be a fraction of what you were given that has to be paid back. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I mean, you certainly have enlightened us, uh, Connie Joe, and I, I thank you once again. Out of curiosity, how do how can people get a hold of you? If they have, you know, I I I, I want to put your links on my show notes, but you know, can you? What is your website again? It's uh, www.enigma.com. 
bookkeepingsolutions.com. Okay, that's perfect. I got, and, two, more, I got two more things though. Oh, okay, great. So there are um, also there's some SBA express loans and the turnaround time though for those are uh, is 36 hours. At least that's what it was. 36 I don't know. hours before you get the money? Loan. Yeah, for an express loan. And that's for up to $1 million. Um, and then if you have existing small business administration loans, you can defer those payments for up to six months. Yeah, so I, I heard about that. A, a buddy of mine was telling me about that. I, that's incredible. So, and I also wanted to give you um, a tell everyone who's listening how you can get information on this bill. So what I did is you just Google HR 748, that's the bill's designation, and um, that should bring up the bill. And then you can search on um, different sections of the bill. For the EIDL grant, you would search on 1110, and that brings you directly to that part of the bill. So you don't have to read all through 100, 880 pages. If you right. want to find out information about the um, payroll protection loans, that's you search on 1102. And then if you want to find out about the loan forgiveness part of the PPLs, you search on 1106. So that's how you can get directly and read it yourself. Folks, if there's ever been a episode that you've downloaded, this is the one you need to download because you need to listen to this over and over again. Um, and and again, I, if you didn't take notes, please take notes once you listen to it again because it's very important that you have this. Um, and, and as Connie Joe said, you know, you got to act fast uh, because it's not, you know, it's not something that you want to sit on. Because um, if, if you need it, go for it now. Um, so. I am I'm, I am blown away by this. I knew this was going to happen uh, just because I knew the caliber of the person that I have on the other end of this uh, interview. So I'm, I'm glad I was able to bring forth her knowledge to my listeners. And if you have any questions, uh, you know how to get a hold of me. And you also know how to get a hold of, of Connie Jo. Her website is www.enigmabookkeepingsolutions.com. Uh, if you don't have a bookkeeper, I suggest you start looking for one. And I, I happen to know one that's very good. So if, uh, <laughs> if anyone, I hope, I hope you got, you have anything else, uh, Connie Joe, before I let you go? Just everybody, um, stay inside. Don't that's spread right. this around. Yeah. The, the this... quicker, the, the more we stay inside, the more we stop spreading this, the less time we're going to have to worry about these loans. We're just going to get back to business and do what we were doing before and uh, carry on. So stay inside, stay safe. Stay inside, stay safe. Words of wisdom from the great Connie Jo Miller. Uh, thanks a lot, Connie Jo, again. And guys, again, this is Frank Deming, Local Business Guy. This has been another ep a special episode, excuse me, of Marketing Solutions for Local Businesses. Um, I will be back this coming Friday with another normal episode where I'm going to give you tools, tips, and tricks on how to further increase your business revenue, especially during these tough times. You got to really understand digital marketing to get the word out about your business. So with that, folks, I am going to end this episode. And until the next time, take care and bye for now. Thanks for listening to another episode of Marketing Solutions for Local Businesses the podcast where you will discover all the latest and greatest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. Don't forget, any links that were mentioned during the broadcast will be available to you in the show notes, so be sure to grab them while you have the chance. Incidentally, if you have any topics that you would like for us to discuss on the show, be sure to send an email to the email provided in the show notes, or click the Contact Us link and let us know what topic you would like us to help you with, and we'll be sure to add it to our schedule. If you would like for Frank and his team to look at your digital marketing presence and give you a free evaluation, simply click the Request a Free Consultation link in the show notes to get a hold of them. That being said, until our next episode, make it a successful digital marketing day. Peace out.